Welcome to Session Self Tutorials. Hello, fellow therapists. I'm Ian, a practicing psychotherapist, and I use Session Self each day in my own private practice. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the calendar and scheduling appointments. To get to the calendar, you can just click on the calendar link in the left nav, and you'll see this screen. At the top, you'll see the current date range that's being displayed. And you can use these arrows to navigate through the calendar. The default view is the week view, but if you want to change to month view or day view, you can do that. You can click back to week view. And then if you've navigated through the calendar to a different date and you want to get back to today's view, you can just click the Today button and return to the calendar view. To filter the calendar, you can click this filter icon and you can see particular calendars of people in your clinic. So to see everyone's calendar, you can click all or if you just want to see one particular person's, you can select and deselect. Same with locations. You can see appointments at all of your locations or at particular locations. Now, when you're ready to make an appointment, you can either click the new appointment link in the left nav or just click the time and date on the calendar that you want to schedule. In this case, we're just going to click on a time and we can see we can click a client session as default and we're going to use that most of the time. But we can also put appointments that are for a client contact, a collateral contact, or just some other event such as a, a clinic meeting. When we start typing a client's name in, an autocomplete will show up so that we can just select the person that we want to schedule. You can schedule default services and rates on the client's detail screen. So for example, good person. If I go to clients, good person, click on billing, and then settings, I can set these defaults up here so that when I schedule them, this is what service will be selected and the price. So if I have a sliding scale, I can set this right up for each person. I don't have to remember it. And when I make an appointment for that person, these defaults will automatically get filled in. So let's go back and do that. You can see good person has a default of 90837 and a $75 rate. So now when I schedule them, that's the service that pops up. That's their sliding scale rate. The 95 modifier was automatically added because I have a telehealth location set. If it was in person, that modifier is not going to be there. And that's all based upon the location settings in your service locations. So for telehealth, make sure your place of service code is a telehealth service code. And then anytime that you schedule appointments with that telehealth location, that telehealth modifier will automatically be added. If there's multiple people in your clinic, you can select which person this appointment is with. The time has already been selected because we clicked that time on the calendar. We can change the color that we want this appointment to be. You can either do it directly on the appointment or under billing settings, services, every code can be set to have a default color. And so you can see 
for 90834s. They're going to be this color of blue. 90837s are going to be this purple color. And end takes, maybe we want them to be red. And so then, let's say if I scheduled an end take with someone That red color is going to be the default color. I can override it, but then when I press save, now on my, my calendar, I can have a high level view of, you know, how many red appointments show up on my screen. That's going to let me know, oh, I've got four intakes this week. I've got to prepare for, you can use the color coding, however works for you, but there's lots of flexibility in what colors you want your endpoint your appointments to show up as so let's finish the one that we are working on and you can see because it was telehealth this telehealth url automatically got filled in for the url and these instructions also automatically appeared and that comes from account settings you go to your telehealth tab and here you can just add your telehealth URL and any additional instructions. This is for links that don't change. If you have a link that changes every appointment, we don't necessarily support that since the, the URL changes every time, but you can still add a link and let us know who your provider is so that we can um, evaluate which, which providers we should try to integrate with. So now let's do one more setup here. So our, we've got through our telehealth setup. Now appointment reminders, we can add additional reminders. Let's say we want to do an email one week before and an email two days before and then one text message. Let's do one text message 12 hours before. We can add up to five reminders total for email and one text reminder. And then click save. Now our appointment is, is set up. If we need to cancel an appointment, we can click this icon and we can select what type of cancellation is it. When we click a cancellation, we can give a reason or not, or we can add a cancellation note. We can charge or not charge by toggling this icon. The cancellation fee is going to be our default cancellation fee that's set up in our billing settings, but we can override it. Maybe this time we agreed to do $50. We can do that. And now that appointment's been canceled. And you can see our icons have changed since we canceled it. We lock appointments down once there's been a note associated so that you don't accidentally delete your notes. If you decide you do need to reopen this appointment, you can unlock the note. And now you can see the icons are back. So this appointment is active again. It's no longer in a canceled state. If I click the pencil icon, I can make any changes to it that I need to change. Maybe I want to change uh, the appointment reminder to a day before. Session bridging is a way to provide feedback to your clients or prompt for feedback from your clients. You can select which feedback form you want to send to them and when you want that to be sent out and then click save. And that feedback form will be sent to them via email and they can go in and provide feedback on the session. 
If you want to manage availability for clients to do online booking, you can click this link. We have another tutorial that explains online booking. And if you want to sync your calendar, you can click the settings to be taken to syncing your calendar. We offer one-way sync or two-way sync with Google. One-way sync will be a feed where your session's health appointments will be sent to your calendar, but it's unable to receive calendar notifications from your external calendar. If you want two-way sync, you can use Google calendars for that. And changes made to your Google calendar will show up on your session's health calendar and vice versa. For calendar sync, you have different options on how you want your appointments to show up. It can use the internal ID to have more privacy. You can just have first name, full name, or just client initials. This concludes the calendar tutorial. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at support at sessionself.com.